Hey guys, this is Adam from at Adam J Cuz over on Instagram. And in this video, I will show you how you can create this cool looking water effect in Photoshop by sampling a stock photo of a water's surface ripples, such as this one. This effect is quick to do and easily reproducible in your own edits. Let's get started. I pretty much do this exact process every time and it's easily repeatable. So using this recent artwork I did as an example, let's add some water into this solid black portion at the bottom. First, I like to create a new group in the relevant place in my layer stack. This is usually above the main subjects and background, but below any effects such as fog, mist or rain. Next, I select all and copy merge and paste onto a new layer inside the reflection group to create a copy of the whole image. I then convert this to a smart object and then I will transform and flip it vertically. This is so if I make changes to the artwork later, for example changing the background, I can just copy and paste the new copy merged version into the smart object and it will already be flipped and have all the various modifications we are about to make already there. After flipping it, we need to move it into position. I like to reduce the opacity by about 50% so I can see roughly where the join should be. Let's move it down into roughly the place where the water would meet the riverbank. I'll then drag in a guide so I can easily see where this join is. Now let's remove everything above the guideline by adding a layer mask onto the group and using a pure black to transparent or white gradient dragged down from just above the guide onto the guide's vertical position. This then masks out everything above the guide with a very slight fade, literally just a few pixels. Next, let's add some smart filters to make it look less like a perfect reflection. First, I add a little bit of vertical motion blur. Because we made our water layer a smart object, we can easily change the values of any of these smart filters later on. I'm making it pretty subtle now, but I may increase this later. Next, add distort wave. There are quite a few values here, so I have a simple formula I use to avoid having to keep remembering which values work. I set the number of generators to around 64 to 100, so we have a good amount of variation. I then set the maximum wavelength and amplitude values to half of this, so 32 in this case, and the minimum values to an eighth of the generator's value, so 8. I then set the scale to a number just below half of the generator value. This is just to start with, I'll usually increase this a bit later on. We then want to make sure the motion blur is the first filter in the layer stack so the waves come into play after the motion blur. This is looking a bit better than just a flipped image, but we can still do a lot more to make it more realistic. I don't want too much of the filter's effect near where the water meets the bank. Luckily, our smart filter object in our layer stack comes with a mask. Let's use a black to transparent gradient again on this mask to fade off the effect near where the water meets the bank. You can see the detail in the reflection now more easily in these areas. Now it's time for the part which really makes a difference. I like to use the ripple highlights on an actual stock photo of a water's surface to basically create a mask on my water layer. So to do this, let's bring in a stock photo of some nice calm water from Unsplash and place it above everything else in the layer stack. Using our guideline we made earlier, our goal here is to scale and change the perspective of the water image so the ripples are roughly in line with the wave distortion filter we applied to our water layer. I usually hide and reveal it a few times to check the ripples are approximately matching with the, with the wave ripples. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's worth spending a bit of time matching as close as you can, as it will make a difference to the effect later on. Once you are happy with the position and scale, we need to make it black and white and boost the white and black tones. <clears throat> add a black and white adjustment layer above the water, then add a curves adjustment layer above this. I usually then just bring in the maximum black and white point handles on the curve to basically squash the overall range between the darkest and lightest tones. This effectively increases the contrast between the whites and blacks, which is what we want here. We don't want the dark areas to be too dark since we are going to make a mask from this and we don't want to mask our areas of the water completely. Keep tweaking until you have something similar to what I have here, where it's mostly white greys and some dark areas. Next we want to create a selection consisting of the bright areas to use as a mask. Click on the channels tab next to our layers tab and ensuring RGB channels is selected, command click on the RGB thumbnail to create a selection of the bright areas. Go back to our layer stack and find our water layer in our reflection group we made earlier and click the add layer mask button on the bottom right. There you go. Since we started with a solid black beneath the reflection group, the dark areas of the mask are basically revealing this, whilst the bright areas of the mask, which is basically the tops of the ripples from our stock photo, are keeping the water reflection layer visible. If you didn't want pure black as the base colour underneath the water layer, you could easily add in a colour adjustment layer under the water layer and change the hue to something else. 
At this point, it's a good opportunity to tweak our values of the wave filter. Let's try boosting the horizontal scale a bit so the effect is more pronounced. You can also try shifting the actual mask position around a bit to line it up better with the wave filter ripples. If you do this, remember to click the little chain link icon that sits between the mask and the layer, as this will then allow you to move the mask independently of the layer. In this case, however, I'm happy with how it's looking, so I'll leave it where it is. Next, we want to tweak it a bit, so it blends in a bit better with the rest of the image. Currently, the mask is a bit too strong, so let's decrease its density value in the mask properties to about 75%. This will let some of the layer's pixels back in over the black areas of the mask. Next, I want it to be a little darker where it meets the bank, as there would likely be a bit of shadow here. A quick and easy way to do this without having to paint on a shadow is to just draw a black to white vertical gradient on the reflection group's layer mask to fade the original mask lined up with the guide we created earlier a bit more. Finally, I want to add some ambient lights onto the surface of the water where the ripples are to brighten it up a little bit overall and help make it look more part of the scene. Let's add a colour adjustment layer on top of everything else in our reflection group and set its colour to a neutral but brightish area of the sky. I'll go for something between the orange and blue tones. Set the blend mode to overlay. For me, this is looking a little bit too strong, so I will command click the layer mask of the water and then create a layer mask on my solid colour adjustment layer using this selection. You could also just option click the mask and drag it up to the colour layer adjustment layer to make a copy of it instead. Let's reduce the opacity to about 75% and I think that's now looking pretty nice. Just to recap then on the different stages, I'll turn the layers off and go through each one. So starting off with our reflection of the whole image as a base, first we added the motion blur and the wave filters. Then we added the mask to the smart filters object to reduce the effect near the bank. Then we have our mask created from the water ripple stock photo and finally the ambient light colour. As always, if you have found this tutorial helpful, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, as this is the best way to support this channel so I can make more Photoshop tutorial videos. See you soon.